Now for this part of the question then, we're asked to find out this distance OR. And to do that, we're going to have to consider the horizontal motion, because that's the only place that this distance OR occurs in. But if we consider the horizontal motion, that would be the equation S equals UT, basically distance equals the horizontal speed times the time it takes to go from here to here. We're going to need that time, okay? And we can't get that time unless we consider the vertical motion. Because we need to consider how long it takes for the particle in the vertical sense to go up here to Q and back down to the ground. That would be the same time it takes for the projectile, the ball in this case, to go from here all the way down to the point R. So we need to then consider vertical motion. Get the time t that it takes to go from p to r, and then use that in the horizontal sense. Now, I've actually put in the angle that we worked out for theta in the previous part, 22.544 and so on. Okay, Now, that means you could update the horizontal and the vertical velocities. If you do work out 40 times the cosine of 22.544, you find that you get 36.9433. Let's just write it in here. We'll put it in brackets, 36.9433, and so on. That would be in meters per second. And if you do 40 times the sine of this angle here, you end up with a speed of 15.336, and so on, okay, meters per second. So there's your two speeds, vertically and horizontally. So you might like to pause the video then and just have a go at this if you feel that you've got some idea now how to go about this. That is, consider the horizontal motion, try and find out the time it takes to go from O to R. That is, consider the vertical motion and find out the time it takes to go from P back down to R. Use that time in the horizontal motion and you should then be able to find out the distance OR. So I'll give you um, a moment or two just to pause the video if you want to have a go. Come back and you can check your working against mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So let's see how we do it then. Well, I said earlier we considered the vertical motion, so what I'd want to do is just write in here, consider the vertical motion. And this vertical motion is going to be from P all the way to R, P to R. And we're going to say, well, okay, P time T was equal to naught. But when it got to R time T, let's say it was equal to big T. So we consider a SUVAT-based equation with upwards being the positive sense. So we'll have that as positive. Write in our variables S, U, V, A and T in the usual way. So what do we know? Well, when it comes to the displacement S, we started at P, went up and came back down again. The displacement at R is going to be minus 36. Okay, so very important then to have our positive sense in here. As for U, the initial velocity, well that was upwards, 40 sine theta, which is now 15.336 and so on. V, the final velocity, we don't know what that is when you, when the ball gets down to R, so we'll just leave that with a question mark. A, the acceleration is downwards due to gravity, it's minus 9.8. And as for the time T, that would be the big T here. And it's that that we need to find out. So what equation would we use? Well, if we come down here then, 
okay the equation's got to be something that leaves out v and it's going to be s equals ut plus a half at squared so let's just put that in that using s equals ut plus a half at squared then all we need to do is fill in our value so we've got s becomes minus 36 equals u u being 15.336 and so on and that's multiplied by t but it's big t here and then plus a half multiplied by acceleration minus 9.8 times the time big t squared now this looks horrible so We've got a quadratic equation, we've got a negative term here, minus 4.9 if we divide by 2. So I'd want to make this positive, we've got to make it equal 0, so I'm going to add this term, minus 4.9t squared, I'm going to add 4.9t squared to both sides, and so we get 4.9t squared. Take this term from both sides, that becomes minus 15.9. 3, 3, 6, and so on. That's times by t. And then we've got minus 36, and that equals 0. So there's no way we're going to sit around trying to factorise this, OK? And so what I'm going to do is use the quadratic formula, OK? It, it will give us t. Remember, the formula is minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a where a is the 4.9 b is the minus 15.336 and c is the minus 36 so t equals minus b so that's going to be minus minus 15.336 so we just write it in as a positive value plus or minus the square root of b squared so we've got minus 15.336 and so on squared make sure you have that in brackets minus 4 times a which is the 4.9 multiplied by c c being the minus 36 should just about get that in there okay a bit cramped but i hope you can see that minus 36 and this is all divided by 2a two lots of 4.9 so if you do this on a calculator, you're going to get two values. One when you take the plus value. When you take the plus value, you end up with t being 4.6947 and so on. And when you take the negative value here, you should find you get t turning out to be minus 1.5649 and so on. Now clearly t's got to be a positive value for the time, so we'll neglect that one. Okay, we'll take the positive value here. Okay, so that's how long it takes the particle to go vertically from P to R. But it's exactly the same time as it takes the particle to move horizontally from P to R. So we can now consider that horizontal motion. So consider let's say the horizontal motion going from P to R and if we do that because there's no acceleration in the horizontal sense because the only acceleration acts vertically it's going to move at a constant speed so that distance O to R is going to equal the horizontal speed times the time and that horizontal speed we just seen earlier is 36.9433 and so on and we need, just need to multiply that with the time the t value here which was 4.6947 and so on and if you work that out you end up with 173.438 and so on and if we round this, say, to the nearest metre, it's going to be 173 metres. We're just right in there to the nearest metre. Or you could have said three significant figures. OK, up to you. But there you go. Hope you managed to uh, follow that. And uh, if you had a go and managed to get that, well done. 
Lorenz.